Manually animating your puppet pin tool placement can be a little tedious, but there's an automated way to do that. And I'm going to show you how to do that in this lesson. Open up Working Files and go to After Effects Projects and then open up 1203 Recording Pin. We've got two layers here, this little boy on top there and this puppet down below. We're going to work on the little boy first. He's going to be a relatively simple animation. The puppet will be more complex, but we're going to take a stab at it as well. I want to have the boy wave to us. So I'm going to go up and click on the Puppet Pin tool. There you go. And if you see these various pin placements, that's great. If you don't see it, then open up like this and just click on the word Puppet. Then you should be able to see them show up like that. What I want to do is I want to record the pin movement of his hand. Before you do that, you go to Record Options. So you can set up how you want it to record. And right now we're going to accept the default settings here, but I'll explain them to you. Speed 100% means it's going to play back in real time. So whatever motion you apply, whatever speed you apply as you make this motion change, it's going to play back in that exact same speed again later. If you make it, let's say, 50%, then it'll slow down the recording, which can help you so you don't have to work too fast, but then it will play it back twice as fast later. Smoothing refers to the number of keyframes. The lower the number, the greater the number of keyframes. So 10 is kind of a reasonable setting. And you can always change this later using something called the smoother, which I'll show you a little bit later. Use draft deformation is a good choice because it puts a yellow outline on the object as you move it around to show you where it's going to go, so that's fine. Show mesh can be a little complex as too many things on the screen, so I leave that unchecked, accepting the default settings. To do the animation, we control or command click on a little pinpoint here, and the moment we click, the stopwatch starts ticking. So I'm going to just click on this guy and then I'm going to start moving him around. But first of all, I'll just press the control of the command key. You see you get a little stopwatch there, but nothing's happening yet until I actually click on my mouse. So ready, set, go. And I'm going to move him up and down. Hi there. How you doing? Wave faster and go a little slower like that. There we go. And hello, and then done. That adds this whole pile of keyframes there. Let me zoom in a bit by going control or command plus a couple of times. You can see all those keyframes there. I'll just drag through there and show you that. Okay. I can do a little RAM preview here. It might take a second, so I might fast forward to get ahead here. All right, there's the little RAM preview there. It looks pretty good. Fast wave there, slow wave. So it's playing back as I record it. Very good. Let me show you the keyframes down here. I'll just stop that playback and go down to the keyframes. Scroll down to see them. There they all are. So you may think that's either a lot of keyframes or not enough. And so to repair that, you go get this smoother. Now I've already got the smoother panel open here, but you probably don't in yours because it's not open by default. To go get the smoother, go to Window, Smoother, there it is, and that'll show up usually down here in the lower right-hand corner. Now I want to change the tolerance. Tolerance of 1 means you're going to have lots of keyframes. If I click Apply, you have more keyframes now, not really what I need here. Control or Command Z to undo that. I'm going to take the tolerance to something greater than 10. If I take it to 10, it'll be basically the same there. So I'll go to, let's say, 20, something like that, or 30, and we'll have fewer keyframes now. So the motion might not be quite as smooth now, but it's easier to manage if we want to change this later. But yeah, I think it's going to work out fine under the circumstances. Just a little hand waving there. All right. One other thing you can do is that you can turn on motion blur. And I do recommend you do that when you have motion just about in anything. I'm going to show you how to do it, but I'm not going to go through the process here because the RAM preview will take forever on motion blur. But the way you do that is you turn on motion blur for the layer. And that means that when you render this, motion blur will be applied. But if you want to see it, if you actually want to see it inside your comp, you click on this guy and that'll let you see it, but it will take a while for your computer to process that motion if you want to actually view it here and play it back. If I were to press the space bar now, or do RAM preview now, it would just take a real long time to go through all the processing necessary to figure that out. So I'm going to stop that process now, and you can see that at least it just started going as a little bit of a blur there at the beginning. All right, let me turn that off so we don't slow things down too much here. Let's go on down to the next layer. I'll just do shift forward slash to go back to full screen view and close this down and click on the puppet down there and cut him to get rid of those other little pinpoints. I want to move him around now too. So I'm going to go click on the pin tool. And sometimes again, you don't see the pinpoints or the pins. So I'm going to go open up the layer there and click on the word puppet and there they show up. We want to move this guy across the screen and have his legs move along with him. Now this is tricky because we've got all these various things we need to animate. So I'm going to start by animating his torso. So I'm going to click on this pin here, and then shift click on the other two. I'm going to have them all move in concert across the screen there. The way I do that is hold on the controller of the command key, and click on one of them, and then move them across. So I click, and I'm going to move them across, like that, like that, and like that. And you're going, this poor guy's legs, what's happening? So you stretch them out like that, like that, like that. Now you need to realize that you're going to deal with the legs later. Okay, here we go. 
So now I'm going to move his left leg over there, our right. Click on that to make that active and deselect those other guys. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this left leg. So I'm going to hold my cursor there so it turns into that little selection tool. Hold on the control key, and once I click, it's going to start going. So I'm going to go like this, 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 like that. And what's going to happen is that his leg's going to kind of slide a little bit. So it kind of slides between those points. You need to use hold keyframes at each step like that to get it to settle down. When it gets to one spot like that, then you hold it there, hold it to the next place. So let me show you that down here. There are all his keyframes. So it goes there, he steps out there, and he gets to that spot. So that should be a hold there. So I just click away to deselect all those guys and right-click on that second one there and say hold. And at some point, I need to then let go of it instead of it'll pop otherwise. So I need to say, okay, I'm going to let go of it. So I'm going to copy this keyframe and paste it somewhere in the middle. So I go Controller Command C to copy it, Controller Command V to put it here and convert it to a regular keyframe by clicking on it like that. So now it won't pop. It'll go like that, and then it'll slide to the next one. And this one's got to be a hold again. Right click on that and make it a hold like that. And then go forward again, do the same copy and paste routine we did it a moment ago. So I'll go Controller Command C, Controller Command V, and then convert this guy to a regular keyframe by sort of deselecting the hold. So let's see how that works. Go like that, stops, goes to the next one. And again, you got to just put these hold keyframes there to get him to kind of settle down. And now we'll bring his right leg along for the ride. The right leg needs to start later. I don't want it to start moving with the left leg. So I'll wait till he gets out there. And then once he gets out there, then I need to start moving the left leg there. So I'll start the motion here. So that the first keyframe of interest is going to be placed right there. So I'm going to hold down my controller command key and then click and go. Next one, next one, next one, next one. And this one, again, is going to kind of slide around. It's not going to be perfect, but I do want to show you that this would be the process that you'd go through to kind of make that thing work out. And again, you need to work out the hold keyframes, and you might need to adjust the timing here in terms of where these keyframes go. But that is how you record puppet pin placement keyframes.